Hi, I'm Barbara. Before I dive into my story, please hit that like and subscribe button for more tales from the twists and turns of family life. Let's jump right into it. Becoming a grandmother was something I dreamed about for years. The joy of holding my grandson Ethan for the first time was a feeling beyond words. Pure love, instant, and overwhelming. But that joy soon faced hurdles I hadn't anticipated, all thanks to Jenny, my daughter-in-law. From the beginning, Jenny set rules that felt more like walls. Please call before you come over, Barbara. Her words were polite but firm, setting a tone of distance right from the start. I respected her space, always calling ahead, but more often than not, my calls went unanswered or were returned with a message saying it wasn't a good time. The few times I did visit, the atmosphere was tense. Jenny hovered, subtly steering Ethan away, limiting my interactions with him. At family gatherings, She'd often make excuses for us not to hold him, or spend any time alone with him. It was confusing and painful. One particularly stark memory was during a small family barbecue at their place. I arrived with a new toy for Ethan, excited to see his reaction. But before I could even give it to him, Jenny intercepted. We have to be careful about overstimulating him, Barbara. Maybe later, okay? The later never came, and I watched Ethan play across the yard the toy left unopened by the door. I felt sidelined, like an onlooker in my own grandson's life. At home, the loneliness crept in. Photos of Ethan filled my phone, yet I felt like I barely knew him. Nights were the hardest, knowing he was just a short drive away, yet feeling worlds apart. I missed the little things, his laughter, his curious eyes, his tiny hands exploring the world. One evening, Overwhelmed by the growing distance, I called David. My voice shook as I tried to explain how his silence on the matter hurt just as much as Jenny's actions. David, I don't understand what I've done wrong. Why won't Jenny let me be a part of Ethan's life? I barely see him. It's like I'm being erased from his world. There was a pause, heavy and filled with unsaid words. Then David's voice, confused and concerned. Mom, I didn't realize it was this bad. I thought Jenny was just being overly cautious as a new mom. I'm sorry, Mom. Let me talk to her. We'll figure this out, I promise. Hanging up, I felt a mix of relief and anxiety. Relief that David understood, and anxiety about what would come next. Would Jenny see my pain, or would this drive a deeper wedge in our already fragile relationship? That night, I looked through my photos of Ethan again. A silent plea in my heart, that soon... I wouldn't just be watching his growth through a screen, but would be part of his life, laughing and playing alongside him. As I closed my eyes, I hoped for a better tomorrow, one where my family felt whole again. During a rare visit, I arrived just as Ethan was waking up from his nap. His little face lit up at the sight of new people, but the warmth in Jenny's eyes didn't reach mine. Ethan's just woken up, so let's try to keep this visit quiet and calm. The undercurrent in her voice was clear. This was not my time. I was merely a guest, an observer in my grandson's life. I nodded, swallowing the hurt, watching Ethan play, his laughter echoing around the room, a sound so sweet yet so distant. As I left their house that day, the brief goodbye from Jenny felt like a door quietly closing, locking me out. The drive home was a blur, tears stinging my eyes as I navigated the familiar streets that somehow seemed longer and lonelier than ever before. At home, surrounded by silence, the walls seemed to echo with the emptiness of my days. My friends spoke excitedly of their grandkids, of days spent baking cookies, trips to the park, bedtime stories, simple joys I was barred from experiencing. The pain of exclusion gnawed at me, turning days into long stretches of solitude. One evening, unable to bear the quiet of the house, I picked up the phone and dialed David. The phone rang each tone heavy with the hope and fear of what I needed to express. David, it's me. We need to talk. It's about Ethan and how things are going. Mom, is everything okay? No, it's not. It's been months, and I've only seen Ethan twice. It's breaking my heart, David. I feel like I'm being pushed out of his life, and it hurts more than I can say. Mom, I... I didn't realize. Jenny said she was giving you space, thinking it's what you wanted. Space? I don't need space for my grandson, David. I need to be part of his life to watch him grow. Not from a distance, not through pictures. I miss him terribly. I'm so sorry, Mom. 
I thought Jenny was handling everything well. I didn't see... I promise I'll talk to her tonight. We'll sort this out. Thank you, David. I just want to be a grandmother to Ethan, that's all. I want to share in his life, not watch it pass me by. Let me fix this, Mom. You deserve to be in Ethan's life. I'll make sure of it. Hanging up, I felt a flicker of hope stir amidst the turmoil. Maybe this conversation would be the bridge that mended the growing gap. Maybe it wasn't too late to change things. That night, as I lay in bed, I thought of Ethan, of his bright smile, and allowed myself to hope that soon, I'd be more than just a spectator in his life. I'd be the grandmother I longed to be, with stories to share and memories to make. That hope, faint as it was, carried me into a restless sleep, dreaming of better days to come. Jenny, we need to talk about something important, about Mom and her role in Ethan's life. I know she's been feeling left out, David, but honestly, it's been so hectic with the baby. I just thought it was easier if we kept visits short and less frequent. But why, Jenny? Mom's hurt. She thinks you're deliberately keeping Ethan away from her. She's missed so much already. I'm overwhelmed, David. Every day is a marathon. I didn't want to burden your mom more, or have her think I'm dumping Ethan on her when I'm too tired to cope. But that's just it, Jenny. Mom doesn't see spending time with Ethan as a burden. She wants to help, to be involved. She loves him, just like we do. I just... I need control, David. Everything has changed so much since Ethan was born. And when Barbara comes over... I feel like I'm losing even more control. It's not easy to admit, but that's how I feel. Jenny, I understand you're under a lot of pressure, but shutting mom out isn't the answer. She can be a huge support to us, to you. We're a family, and we all need each other. I know, and I'm sorry. It's just... Sometimes I feel like I have to do it all myself. Like I have to prove I'm a good mom. Being a good mom isn't about doing it all alone. It's about knowing when to ask for help when to share the load. Let's find a way to make this work. For all of us. I've been so focused on being perfect. I didn't see how I was isolating us. Maybe I do need to loosen up a bit. Let your mom in more. It might be good for Ethan, too, to spend more time with Barbara. Thank you, Jenny. Let's talk to mom together, explain things, and see how we can all move forward. She just wants to be part of our lives, part of Ethan's life. Okay, we can try. I don't want to be the reason your family feels torn apart. Let's figure out a better balance. As the conversation drew to a close, David felt a cautious optimism. Jenny's willingness to reconsider her stance was a step forward, a glimmer of hope that perhaps the rift could be healed. They agreed to invite me over the following weekend, a gesture to start mending the gaps that had formed between us. The next day, David called me, recounting the conversation. My heart swelled with mixed emotions. Relief that Jenny was opening up. Anxiety about how we would rebuild what had been lost. And a renewed hope that finally, I could truly be a grandmother to Ethan. This conversation marked a turning point. A chance to redefine our family dynamics and strengthen the bonds that had frayed under the weight of misunderstanding and unspoken expectations. Thanks for coming, Barbara. I think it's important we clear the air. It means a lot that you're open to discussing this, Jenny. I've missed being a part of Ethan's life. I've been thinking a lot since David and I talked. I realize now how my actions might have made you feel excluded. It's been hard, Jenny. All I've ever wanted was to be a loving grandmother, to support you and David, and to cherish Ethan. I know, and I'm sorry for keeping you at arm's length. After Ethan was born, everything felt so overwhelming. I was trying to keep control, and I thought by managing everyone's involvement, I could handle it better. I can understand that, but I felt pushed away. It hurt, feeling like I was losing not just Ethan, but part of my family too. I see that now. I was so wrapped up in my own anxiety, I didn't consider your feelings. I was wrong, and I'm sorry, Barbara. I want to fix this. Thank you, Jenny. Hearing that from you means more than you might realize. David, who had been quietly observing the exchange, nodded with relief. Maybe we can start finding ways for Barbara to spend more time with Ethan. Like, regular visits, or even a day each week? That sounds wonderful. I'd love that, really. And Jenny, if there's ever anything you need help with, I'm here. Not just for Ethan, but for you too. I'd appreciate that. And maybe you could show me some of those parenting tricks you used to mention. I think I could use a bit of that wisdom now. 
Absolutely. I'd be happy to share. And I could learn a thing or two about being a grandparent in today's world from you as well. As we talked, the tension that had once clouded the room began to lift, replaced by laughter and shared stories of parenting, of mistakes and triumphs. Jenny and I started planning our first grandma day, a day where I would take Ethan to the park and spend some quality time together. David's face lit up seeing us interact like this, his family knitting back together in front of his eyes. This is all I ever wanted, for us to be a family that supports each other. As the meeting drew to a close, Jenny gave me a hug, a gesture that sealed our new understanding and commitment to move forward together. I left their house that day, not just as Barbara, but as Grandma, a title I hold dear and now could embody fully, with the love and trust of my family restored. This heartfelt discussion was a turning point, reminding us all of the power of communication and the strength of family bonds. As I drove home, I felt a weight lift from my heart, replaced by excitement for the future. The road had been rocky, but now it was leading us to a better place. Together. Look, Grandma, I made a castle. Ethan's excitement filled the air as we played in the sandbox at the local park. That's amazing, Ethan. You're quite the architect, aren't you? Every giggle, every moment spent teaching him how to plant flowers or bake cookies, deepened a connection that had been denied for too long. It wasn't just about making up for lost time. It was about building new memories, ones that would become foundational to his childhood. At family gatherings, where once I had felt like an outsider, I was now right in the midst of it all. Ethan's second birthday party was a testament to the change dynamics. Jenny had helped me decorate the backyard with balloons and streamers, a joint effort that symbolized our mended relationship. Can you help me with the piñata, Barbara? Ethan's been looking forward to it all week. Of course, Jenny. Let's make sure it's hung just right for the little ones. Reflecting on the journey one evening while sorting through photos from the party, I realized how vital communication had been in healing our wounds. It was David's willingness to mediate, to not choose sides, but to open a dialogue that had guided us here. David, I just want to say thank you again, for everything, for not letting our family break apart. Mom, I'm just glad you and Jenny talked it out. Seeing you with Ethan, seeing how happy he is, it's all I could ask for. As Ethan grew, so did his curiosity and love for the stories I shared about his dad's childhood. Stories that brought peals of laughter and wide-eyed wonder. Grandma, was Daddy really afraid of the dark? He was, just a little, until he got his superhero nightlight, just like the one you have. Each story, each shared secret, wove a tapestry of family lore that Ethan absorbed eagerly, linking past and present. Now, as I watch Ethan grow, not just as a bystander, but as a central figure in his life, the pain of the past seems like a distant memory. The joy of reconciliation, of restored relationships, overshadows the initial misunderstandings and stands as a testament to the strength of our family bonds. In this journey, we learned that the foundations of family are never too shaken to rebuild, that the heart's capacity for forgiveness and love is vast, and that communication is the key to unlocking these doors. As I close this chapter of our lives, I look forward to the many chapters yet to be written, filled with laughter, love, and the occasional life lesson, shared not just with Ethan, but with David and Jenny too, as we navigate the beautiful complexities of family together. That's the end of our story, about overcoming family misunderstandings and building stronger bonds. Now, I have a question for you all. Have you ever had a misunderstanding with a family member that affected your relationship? How did you resolve it, or is it still unresolved? Your stories and insights could help others facing similar challenges. Don't forget to hit that like button if you found this story moving and subscribe to stay updated with more content like this. Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you.